Thank you. I have the pleasure of reporting on behalf of Group 3. Very good work. Um, and I'm going to take the opportunity, rare opportunity, to make a presentation without using a PowerPoint, which is very <laughs> nice. Use a traditional <laughs> method of talking. So um, the task or responsibility for Group 3, as written in the uh, schedule, was linking veterinarians and veterinary paraprofessionals how to go about it in compliance with OIE standards. The first thing we did was to try and get a specific notion of what we meant by linkage. Was it in the very broad sense, or were we looking specifically at the issue of supervision, the type of supervision between veterinarians and paraprofessionals? We decided it was the latter, and we went ahead and worked on that basis. Okay, so uh, we defined uh, linkage as supervision with the intent of creating accountability and quality assurance for delivery of service. And we discussed the different scenarios and realized that there are situations when, uh, when paraprofessionals are working in government, the uh, um, levels of supervision are clearly uh, implied and, and defined. Uh, when uh, Paraprofessionals are working in high-level uh, private practices, uh, like we saw of veterinary nurses in South Africa. Again, the supervision is direct and it's clearly defined. And the area that we saw of greatest concern and that needed m mostly to be addressed was the issue of veterinary paraprofessionals providing clinical services in remote areas where direct supervision by veterinarians is not clear and we or possible, and recognize that as the area of greatest concern. So we focused our energies on trying to determine how we could address that area. And the first thing we re came to agree was that we need to strengthen veterinary statutory bodies as the basis for uh, regulation of the professions and paraprofessions. And that in order for veterinary statutory bodies to work effectively, there first has to be a strong legal basis. So veterinary legislation has to be in place to create and empower the veterinary statutory body. And then uh, this representation within the statutory body has to include veterinary paraprofessionals. They have to have a voice at the table. Their perspective and needs and responsibilities need to be addressed in the context of setting the standards within the veterinary statutory body and for setting the, the degrees of uh, supervision. And then the veterinary statutory body has to be clear about the categories of veterinary paraprofessionals they will recognize, the tasks that each of those categories is allowed, the level of training that's required, and the supervision, that the type of supervision, if any, that's, that's necessary. Okay. And then, in addition, veterinary statutory bodies need more um, resources for inspection and enforcement to guarantee that the outputs of the statutory body are respected. Okay. Then, because the situation of people working in remote areas is, is so challenging, we decided that we needed to have creative approaches to dealing with this issue of supervision to provide accountability, uh, quality assurance, and to protect the public good. And a number of interesting ideas were brought forward. Uh, one, for example, uh, Government entering into uh, MOUs with private practitioners and actually paying private practitioners with the responsibility of assigning them to paraprofessionals, community-based animal health workers, and making them responsible for that supervision. We had another proposal for tiered or hierarchical supervision, where if you have uh, community animal health workers working in very remote areas, you won't have veterinarians, but you might have some higher level of diploma or certificate paraprofessional in that area who could be responsible for supervising uh, uh, community-based animal health workers and in turn report to a veterinarian at the provincial or district level uh, to create a chain of, of uh, supervision. Okay. Uh, then we had an idea of outputs-based supervision, where you make somebody responsible, uh, and they're accountable for making sure that things go right, but you don't prescribe to them how that supervision is carried out. You just say whatever, you work it out according to what works in your situation, uh, with the end point being that you have to report to us reliably and honestly uh, that there is compliance with the requirements that are uh, necessary. Okay. Then, uh, very interestingly, there were a number of uh, 
recommendations or suggestions about uh, technological, using technology to assist with uh, the challenge of supervising in remote areas. And uh, mobile phones came up immediately of having, in both a, in a sort of a less formal and a more formal way, less formally, uh, People out in the field can report in by telephone to ask questions or identify what they're doing, uh, make reports, or more, more um, formally, uh, in Western Cape, they're actually using uh, GPS to track the movements and activities of uh, uh, paraprofessionals to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, uh, uh, not sitting uh, somewhere when they should be out on farms and so forth. So really uh, using technology to monitor carefully uh, what people are doing in the field. Then uh, new technology related to drugs and concerns about uh, improper use of drugs and all the related issues of drug residues and antimicrobial resistance. And there's technology now for barcoding products so that uh, uh, Ethical products can be distinguished from counterfeit or substandard products that look the same. So the mechanisms for ensuring that people in the field are using only barcoded products and buying them from suppliers who only supply barcoded products. And even beyond that, I think in Nigeria suggested that they are providing um, Everybody who's registered as a technician with the veterinary statutory body is issued a, a digital ID card and to go to a prescribed pharmacy to buy uh, medicines, they have to show their ID and they have to be in the registry for quality medicines to be sold to them. So these are some technological uh, potential solutions that can assist in the supervisory uh, challenge.